Hello and welcome to lesson 9.1 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to bridge uh, one of my favorite topics in making interesting animations, importing and using sound files into your Alice animations. Now so far, far you've probably made some cool animations. We've adjusted the camera properties, we've had cam camera panning and zooming and objects picking up other objects. and. It, the one consistent in all these animations, though, is they're completely silent. Animations get so much neater when you can add background music, when you can add sound effects and things like that. And there's no shortage of those files available on the internet. You can pick from millions of different sound files to add to your animations to give it some real personality. You can start adding voice to your characters and doing voiceovers and most computers have a simple sound recorder built into them like Windows Sound Recorder so that you can make your own sounds. This is a really easy to understand topic and it can add a lot of character to your, character to your animations. So let's go ahead and get started with adding sound to your Alice worlds. So I have here a, a new Alice world that was just opened and I'm going to go ahead and add an object here. So let's go to our local gallery and select an animal. And from the animals gallery, I'm going to select the chicken and just throw a chicken out here in the world and rotate him so you can see him a little bit better. Now, every object in Alice has access to a method called play sound. If you click on your chicken object, make sure the method tab is selected and scroll down a little bit. You'll see this chicken play sound. When I drag that over to my method window, I've got a list of all the different sound files that are inherent to Alice. I'm going to want chicken to play, so I'm going to select chicken off of my list. When I hit play now, through my speakers, you'll hear an audible chicken sound effect. So there you have it. That's just one of the sound files that's available in Alice. And you can see the list is pretty short. You can play around with these different sound files and sometimes they're appropriate. But the real power in importing or in using sounds is the ability to import your own sound files. You can use MP3s and WAV files and you can even record your own voice. So let's go ahead and load up a, a new scene and take a look at how we'll import sounds for use in our Alice world. Okay, so what you're looking at here is uh, a scene that you should be familiar with if you followed the entire Alice tutorial series. Uh, it's a scene very similar to what I created back with Orbiting Objects, which I think was Lesson 5.3. I've changed some of the texture maps, but essentially what we have is a simple animation where we have uh, the planet Jupiter, in this case, I haven't put in the rotation for Jupiter, and I haven't put in the camera pan. It's a real simple animation, but I do have the moon sort of orbiting the planet. And what I want to do is add some interesting background music to this. And I've thought of maybe adding some spacey type sounds or some cosmic background music, or, or maybe what sounds like NASA radio chatter. So I want to find those sound files. Because if I go to add a sound now, let's say I were to add Sphere High Poly 2, which is my moon object, and select Play Sound, there's really nothing in here that suits what I want to do. You'll spend a lot of your time finding uh, good and usable sound files for your Alice Worlds. So let's surf on over to one of my favorite resources for sound, and that's freesound.org. You can see right up here, freesound.org. Freesound.org is a free site, but you do have to register for it. So if you're, I've got my account already logged in, but you might have to register for an account and provide your email address before you have access. But this is one of my favorite sound file sites on the internet. First of all, everything is free, and they have thousands upon thousands of different sounds. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but I have never come to freesound.org and not found something that I'll use in my animations or my programs or the projects that I'm working on. I'm going to search up here in the top right for space. 
and I just get, I, I've got 7,809 sounds to pick from. Now, I'm not going to go through them all, and I kind of previewed this before I recorded, but you can preview any of the sounds by clicking on the little play button, and each one also has a duration. Knowing the duration of your sound files can be important. And the one that I settled on was the space1.mp3. It, it kind of provides good background music, so let's hit play and make sure that this is the sound file that I was thinking of. Yep, that's definitely the one that I was looking for. So I want to download this, uh, this MP3 because I want to import it into my Alice world and use it as a background track for my space animation. Just click on the name of the file and click this download button. Now this is about a five or six meg file, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video, download the file, and then I'll show you how to import it when we come back. So my sound file is now finished downloading. Let's head back to Alice and get this to be used in our world. One way that you can, well, there's two ways. Uh, just like we did texture mapping, you can import a sound specific for an object. So I can select Sphere High Poly 2 if I know that's the object that's going to be playing sound, and go into Properties, select the Sounds tab, and import a sound here. That will make the sound available for that particular object. I can also go to File and Import and make a sound file available to the entire world. Now the only thing that this really impacts is later as we use Alice, you'll be able to export objects for use in multiple worlds. So if I create, uh, say, a really detailed walking animation for one of the characters, I would be able to export that to another world and use it in any future Alice worlds. If I import sound files and texture maps here for the specific object, that object will get to keep the sound files as it moves from world to world. If I import it to the world, the object won't export with the ability to pull those sounds. But for now, I'm just going to import using file and import. I'm gonna to go to my Alice directory and I created a new directory called sounds. And the sound file we just downloaded is in there. So I'm going to click on that and click import. Now immediately nothing happens. However, when I go to the method, and I'm going to attach this to sphere high poly 2, which is my moon, I'm going to have that moon play a sound. So I'm going to grab play sound and move it to my do together loop so that the sound plays while the animation is running. Since I've imported the sound file now, it's available on my pull-down menu. So I'm going to select that sound file, and I see I've got the Sphere High Poly 2 playing a sound while it's revolving around Jupiter. Let's go ahead and hit play and make sure that it works. Now, while my animation is running, I have that kind of cool background music that I just downloaded from freesound.org adding some character to my scene. Now one of the other ideas I had for the scene was to maybe put some radio chatter uh, in the background, like maybe some NASA radio chatter or something interesting like that. And so let's head back over to freesound.org and I'm just going to do a search for NASA radio. And I did search around a little while before I recorded this video. Uh, there was hundreds of different sound effects, and some of them were kind of just not that exciting. But when I did a search for the NASA's, uh, NASA radio, I scrolled down and I found one that I really kind of liked. And it's this Houston We Had a Problem. When I play it, it's radio chatter from NASA. Okay. So, so what I was going for is I'd like to have that kind of playing quietly in the background. So just like you did for the last one, go ahead and click on this and click the download button and, and save this file. Now I went ahead and did that on the front end here, so I've already downloaded and uh, saved this file. I'm going to head back to my Alice world now, because what I want to do is add this. Now Alice allows us to use multiple channels of sound, so I can play the background music along with the radio chatter if I so desire. So I'm going to File 
and then import. And from my sounds directory, I'm going to find the new file I just downloaded. And here it is, Houston, we had a problem here. Click import so that I can use this with my sounds. And then just like I did last time, I'm, I'm going to attach this to the sphere, high poly 2. It doesn't necessarily matter which sound pl plays, but... So here we go. I've got my world, J. Wallace, Houston, we had a problem here. And now this sound will play along with my background. Okay, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, now this sound, a little bit too loud for what I'm going for. I don't want the radio chatter to be that loud. We do have an added argument that we can provide, which is a uh, volume level. And let's go ahead and turn this down about halfway. So I'm going to turn the volume down so it's only half as loud as it was. This should quiet down our radio chatter and make it sound more of like background ambiance than an overpowering sound effect. Okay, even that still sounds a little bit too loud. So let's uh, knock that down even further. I'm going to knock this down to 0.1 and see if that helps. And there we go. That sounds a lot better. So I still have the background music that I'm looking for playing rather loud as the forefront of the scene. But in the background, I've got a little bit of the radio chatter that I was hoping to accomplish. And by mixing those sounds together, I'm creating more of a full and complete scene. The one limitation that you'll have with Alice sounds is that once they start playing, there's no good way to stop them. Now, you do have arguments that you can use to, mar to marker and from marker, but they don't always work for every sound file. In general, you're going to play a complete sound file. So in this case right here, if I wanted to go to another scene and turn the sounds off, I don't have a good option to do that. So paying attention to the length of your sound files can be particularly important. Sounds are really no more complicated than that. You'll learn a lot more by simply using the sounds and practicing with them in your code than we could probably cover in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and cut it there and head over to the Lesson 9.1 Challenge program, which will be an animation importing sounds now that we have the ability to do so. And here we are back at the Lesson 9.1 Challenge program, and we're back on the landing pad that we uh, first created in Lesson 8.3. Our drop ship is now ready to take off, and this spaceport is ready to function. So here is the animation complete with the added sounds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And there you have it. That is the Lesson 9.1 Challenge Program to create uh, a believable scene using sounds. Now, I chose to stay with the sci-fi theme, and I went on freesounds.org, and I got some sound effects of an object taking off and a countdown and uh, an alien landing sound. I think it was Spaceship Landing was the name of the file. And then I included all of those sound files together into a cohesive animation. So that's going to be your goal, to download at least three different sound files and apply them for use during your scene to play at different times, so that you have a scene that is not only animated, but also has the audio to go with it. Sound can be a little bit tricky as you start to work with it. You'll, you'll find that your animation can pause sometimes or 
you really have to think about where you're putting this into your code. So as always, if you're experiencing problems and your program isn't quite working correctly, you are more than welcome to leave your questions in the comments and I will certainly help you sort out your programs. Thank you so much for watching the Atlas tutorial series. We'll see you back for lesson 9.2 and until then, have a great day.